Hello and welcome to another training video from Embrel, an Amerotherm company. In today's training video, we're going to heat apart using the Easy Heat Li. This video is intended to follow the Easy Heat Li setup video. The Easy Heat Li is a very versatile induction heating system and it will work with a wide variety of coil shapes, inductance values, part sizes, and part materials to efficiently and repeatedly deliver heat to your parts. To maximize the heating efficiency and to be able to draw the maximum power from your Easy Heat Li into your part, it is important to correctly match the Easy Heat Li to your coil and part. Correctly matching the Easy Heat Li to your coil and part is achieved by selecting the correct tap on the transformer and by fitting the correct capacitor or capacitors to the workhead. Ambrel has supplied your Easy Heat Li with the correct capacitors for your application, so you are unlikely to need to change the capacitors unless you use your Easy Heat for other heating applications. We will show you how to change capacitors in this video in case you need to do so in the future. If you purchased a custom coil that was shipped with your Easy Heat Li, the heat station has already been set to the correct tap at the factory. Just ensure that the tap number stated on your data sheet is the same as what is set on the heat station. We'll also show you how to adjust the tap in this video. Before we begin our demonstration, let's review the buttons that are on your Easy Heat Li. The button on the left, under the screen, is the Start button. This is used to begin heating. The button just to the right of the Start button is the Stop button, which ends heating. The button that's central around the arrows is the home button. The button to the left of the home button is the page button. The arrow buttons are used for navigation and setting the power or current level. Now let's get started by turning on your Easy Heat Li. All right, now we're going to turn our Easy Heat Li on. As you can see, the frequency value is bouncing around and the error light has come on. So this means that we need to adjust our cap value. Alright, now we need to open up the workhead to fix the tuning error. In order to do this, we'll need a number 2 Phillips head screwdriver, a 4mm Allen, and a 6mm Allen, along with a half inch wrench. All right, now we're going to go ahead and remove the screws. We're removing screws on the side of the workhead right now. Now we'll remove the screws on top of the workhead using the Phillips head screwdriver. Now we're removing the screws on the other side of the workhead. All right, now we've got the cover off. At this point, we need to use an Allen to remove the coil. Also, be sure to make sure the water is off since we are in fact removing the coil. Alright, now we have removed the coil. This model is set up as a 400S, but we need to actually set it up as an 800S to fix the issue. What we'll need to do here is loosen the first two screws in the front of the unit. And now we're going to remove two screws on the inside of the unit. We do leave the two screws in the front to prevent torquing. Now this process will enable us to replace the capacitors. Alright, now we can pull the capacitor out 
and put a new one in. You should have the label out as we did there for identification purposes, so you know which capacitor is in there. Now we must replace the screws. Right now we're just tightening them. Now we're going to put the coil back on the workhead. All right, with the work head uh, having the coil attached to it, now we just need to put the cover back on and put in all of the screws once again. So in this case, we're just going to start by uh, putting the screws in the top of the unit. Now we're putting screws back into the side of the unit. Using the Phillips head number two. Right, we're putting the screws back in the top in the back of the workhead. And now we'll just flip it around and put screws in the other side of the workhead cover. All right, that completes this portion of the process. All right, the frequency was bouncing around at 134 kilohertz prior to changing the caps. Now we have to tell the Easy Heat that we indeed changed the caps by entering into the menu page. You can hit the right arrow to scroll through the different menus and you'll find Heat Station. The page button will select it. Hit the right arrow to get to modify cap. Press the page button. We had one cap in the workhead before, which was 400 kVar. We now have two caps that are wired in series, so it's 800 S. Make sure you select 800 S, not 800 P, since it is in series, not parallel. The two capacitor values are 1.5, four caps, one and two, so make sure you fill in C1 and C2 accordingly. Then hit the center dot to go home. Now you'll see the frequency is holding constant and the ready light is on, the heat light is on, and we have an actual power value. 
Now, let's learn how to identify when you need to adjust your tap and make that adjustment. You need to press the start button. When you notice an asterisk next to frequency, you hit the page button, and then it'll tell you, in this case, to decrease the tap. The other way to see it is when you are done with the heat cycle and the heat is off, you can hit the page button, scroll over to system status, hit the page button, hit the up arrow to review the previous faults, and it tells you to decrease the tap. Now we'll review how to decrease the tap. To decrease the tap, we must remove the part from the coil, turn the work head around, and now you'll need a slotted screwdriver and a number two Phillips. We'll remove the top screw and the two screws on the side. That will enable us to remove the back cover. All right, with the cover removed, you can see that we actually have three wires, the center wire and the X and Y wires. There's a diagram there, as you can see, which helps us identify which tap we're on. Currently, we are on tap 30. We're going to need to change it to tap 14. So now we'll just check out the diagram and see how we need to arrange the wires. All right, now we'll use the slotted screwdriver, and that will enable us to loosen the screws so we can change the wire locations. All right, now we're just loosening the new locations so we can place the wires in the new locations. We also have a copper jumper, and the copper jumper has to be moved to a new location when the tap is changed from a number above 20 to one under 20, which we're doing in this case since we're changing from tap 30 to tap 14. All right, now we'll just tighten the screws to secure the wires to their new locations. All right, now we've changed it to tap 14, so we can now replace the back cover and put the three screws back into the unit to secure the cover. All right, and that just about concludes this step. The next step for us will be to actually heat our part and make sure that we are now on the correct tap. Before heating our part, we need to change the tap in the software too. Click on the page button, scroll until you see the heat station selection, hit the page button, press modify tap, press the page button, as you recall, we were on tap 30, but we now need to change it to our new tap, which is tap 14. Now we've selected that, we hit the center button, and now we can turn on the heat. All right, let's press the start button. All right, we're getting about six kilowatts. Previously, we were only getting two kilowatts, and there's no asterisk. 
So that indicates that we are now on the correct tab. This concludes the Heating with your Easy Heat Li video. Thank you for watching, and certainly let us know if you have any questions whatsoever. Thanks again.